Hey crafters, I'm back with a new sketch and this time I'll be creating two projects that are both clean and classy. I'm really excited to work with this latest sketch. I think it really calls for some texture around the border and a really great focal point. So for our first project, this is what I'll be using. I'll be using the satin gold sequins, the seashore gradient cardstock set, a few artist markers, the Fine Frames cover die, the Celebrate Today stamp and die set, and the Sentiments 2 stamp set. To get started with the first card, I wanted to add some texture around the border of my card base, so I'm going to use the Fine Frames die. And I thought I would give you a few tips that I find helpful when working with this die. So first thing is that I always cut my piece of cardstock larger than the die. So that way I'm sure to get that full four and a quarter by five and a half piece. Then when I'm adhering everything together before I run it through my die cut machine, I always use a piece of adhesive sheet to make sure that I have adhesive on my die. And then when it goes through, everything is already cut and it's good to go. So you might have to shim a little extra to do that, but it's really worth it in the end. And then the third thing is that I do use a piece of press and seal. So let me show you how I do that. Once the die is already cut, I'm gonna go ahead and slip my tool underneath here. And then I want to try to keep this together as much as possible. So hopefully because I've got that extra backing on here, this whole thing is going to stay together. So now I will go ahead and put it on my press and seal. So when I pull off the backing here, I don't get individual pieces and that should help keep everything together. And when I put it on my card base, I should be good to go. So now I just need to take my tool here again and pull up the backing from my adhesive sheet. And I kind of had that preset so it didn't take forever, but sometimes you do kind of have to pick through to get them all up. And then I'm just gonna peel back a corner here. Now this is just like I would add on a full size sheet to a card base. I always just start with the corner to make sure that I can get everything aligned really easily without having to deal with a lot of sticky. So I'm just gonna now align that corner and I will actually bring it down and make sure that everything is all lined up. There we go. And now I have that corner aligned. So I can lift this up and pull off the rest of the adhesive sheet and press down as I go. And then pull off my press and seal last. And by doing that, it makes it really easy to work with the fine frames. And now I've got perfect placement and I've got all of my pieces in order and I don't have any wonkiness and this card is ready to go for the rest of the project. For the next piece of this project, I have the focal point. Now I am going to die cut this, but it's going to be backed with a piece of black cardstock. So I'm gonna do something interesting with the coloring. What I've done is stamped and embossed in black this beautiful image from the Celebrate Today stamp set. So this is all ready to go. And I'm going to add just a little pop of color. I'm going to use the bullet end of my marker and just do a couple little flicks on each of these flower petals to add just a little bit of color. So I am trying to avoid the lines because I don't want to get into the black embossing. It will react with my marker and cause some bleed. So just adding little bits here and there. And then I'm gonna come back with my colorless blender to blend out these colors. So you can see just some little flicks of color in each of these petals is all I really need. And it doesn't look too hot right now, but I guarantee you that once we're done, it's gonna look really great. So I'm not gonna do anything with the leaves. And now I'll just take my colorless blender again with the bullet nib and just do some circles on top of all of that ink that I just laid down. And that's going to help it to spread out in that space and make it soften up a little bit. All right, now that I have all of that blending done, I'm going to use my black marker and start coloring around the edges. Now you might think that this isn't going to work out so well 
because I've got black on black and it might make these leaves and flowers look a little blob like but because I have that embossing on here I'm going to end up with two different textural looks so I'm going to have the flat black from the marker but then I'm going to have the shiny black from the embossing and that's going to make all the difference you really will be able to still tell what the image is and see the definition because of that embossing so because I'm die cutting this out, I don't need to color this whole sheet in. I just need to go around far enough for the die to be able to grab only black. And of course, if I do miss any areas after I die cut it, I'll know and I'll be able to just make some adjustments and add in additional black. So this just takes a few minutes. And when I come back, I'll have this die cut and we'll talk a little bit about the sentiment and assembly. All right, so I have my piece colored in and die cut. And doesn't that just look really amazing with all that black in the background? And you can still see the detail really, really beautifully, even against the black because of all of that black embossing. So I have a piece of black cardstock and a piece of black fun foam that I'm going to back this on. So I'll add on my piece of fun foam first. And that's just gonna go on my piece of cardstock. And I'm doing this instead of using the adhesive squares so that way I have a really nice firm place for my element to go in the end and it's really going to pop that up super nice. Okay so that's a nice little platform for that and I can add on my embellishment right in the center. It's a beautiful focal point for this card. All right, and then I stamped out some of the Sentiment Strip 2 sentiments onto a few little strips of the same shade of cardstock to coordinate in the same shade as the artist marker that I used. And I've got Best Wishes and then For My Fabulous Friend. But I really want this to be a little shorter to match my uh, sketch a little more closely. So I'm going to just chop off the For My and leave fabulous friend and maybe just clean up the end a little bit here there we go and that's going to be that best wishes and fabulous friend so let's finish up some assembly here i've got my card base all ready to go with those fine frames on there and now i can add my finished center element goes right in the middle just absolutely perfect and then i can pop on my little sentiment strips. Following the sketch, I'm gonna just make sure that I've got them popping off of the center element and into the fine frames element. And they'll be spaced just slightly apart. Just like so. And I really like the way that I end up with a little bit of horizontal and vertical juxtaposition here so that works out really well to help with some design and why not add a few little sequins to the project as well if I can get some of those small ones out there we go and I'm going to just put a few little sequins to finish this off I'll put a couple on this side and one down on this side so one of the large ones I'll pop up here along with this little tiny one. These two really, these two sizes really play well together. And then I'll put one of the medium ones down here towards the bottom. And there we go. Our first design using this latest sketch is complete. Our second project is going to be just as classy, but maybe a little bit more on the quick and simple side. So I'll be using the Antique Gold Pigment Ink, the Bold Greetings die set, the City Scene Stencil, and the Dotted Swirls Debossing Cover Die. For this project, I'll be flipping the sketch so that way I can really take advantage of this long cityscape scene. So I have the stencil attached to a piece of jet black cardstock that's already sized for that center focal point. And I'm using the antique gold pigment ink and a uh, sponge applicator. So I'm going to actually just kind of dab it on instead of swirling it around. And that's going to help me make sure I get a really good concentration of this gold ink and that I get some nice crisp lines from the stencil. I love that this gold ink shows up so stunningly against the black and you can get a really rich 
color from it without a lot of effort. And this will be dry in just a matter of minutes. It's not going to wipe off of my hand. So if I go ahead and pull this apart, you can see the amazing results that I have from that. Believe it or not, this piece is probably the hardest piece to do for this entire card. And as you can see, it is already dry. So I've got this and I've got my dotted swirls debossing cover die in some dark gray. Now, a tip with this one is you can definitely cut your piece of cardstock the exact size that you need. It is slightly larger than four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's really easy to get your cardstock in place and make sure that you get the entire thing covered with the debossing image. So that is super, super gorgeous. It looks just like a quilt to me. And I'm going to pop this right onto my card base. So this will go on from edge to edge, just like our first card. There we go. And then I can pop in my focal point element, that rectangle in the center. Now I could have opted for just a plain gray background, but I really thought that this beautiful pattern would help soften up all of these hard edges and the black and white color that scheme that I have going on. So there we go. Actually, I guess it's really a black and gold color scheme, isn't it? So the last thing I need to do is add in my sentiment. And because I have flipped my sketch, I have those two lines to contend with. And technically they would kind of flip this way, but that's not really what I wanna do. So I am going to take some liberties with the sketch and get those two lines going in the right direction for my sentiment. So I have these two die cuts from the Bold Greetings and these are cut out in the gold foil. And I'm just going to pop them right into the cityscape. Give them a chance to stick. There we go. And I'll pop the U right underneath. Now, if you don't have confidence in your spacing, you might want to start with the U first to make sure that you have it on as much of the gold as you want it to end up being on. But I was pretty confident about where I wanted this to land. So there we go. Gorgeous. So as you can see, this second project comes together super quick, but when you're done, you can have two fantastic projects using our brand new sketch. If you've been using these sketches for your creative inspiration, please don't forget to tag us at Altenew LLC and at Pixel Mavens Retreat so we can check out all of your crafty genius on social media. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll have a new sketch for you later this month, but until next time, Happy crafting. Help support my craft education efforts by clicking on the subscribe button and the little bell so you'll get notified when I create new content just for you. If you're looking for something else to watch, how about one of these crafty videos? 